you talk about every topic, right, yeah. in the world. You ever second guess yourself? You ever feel sorry about talking about something? She complains that her gums are sore and separated from her teeth. Ooh, and her teeth are coming loose. The maid described life at Neverland as, as part Animal House and part a PG-rated Roman G. You don't have to like me. I wish you would. But I'm good because I like me. Scandals, gossip, innuendos, rumors, we love it all. We love it because it takes us out of our own reality. It gives us an opportunity to look at somebody else's problems and know that we are not alone. Hell, if a celebrity is going through so much crap, our lives cannot be so bad after all. Many of us love to hate, and we love to build people up to tear them down. We love to watch a celebrity take a fall. It reaffirms that even with all of their wealth and their fame and their success, they are just like us. They put their pants on the same way, one leg at a time. I have become a leader in the gossip industry, someone whom the others call on when something goes down. They actually want my take on a particular scandal. And for those who accuse me of creating this frenzy around gossip, I'll tell them to look around. This thing has been going on long before Wendy Williams got a hold of it. That genie was let out of the bottle a while ago, and she's not going back. Wendy Williams, the shock jock radio personality and talk show host, made this statement in her 2005 book, The Wendy Williams Experience. In that book, Wendy documented some of her most controversial moments in her career and some of the biggest celebrity scandals in pop culture at that time. Wendy's style of reporting on celebrity lives created a new generation of high drama and tabloid culture. Before the Perez Hiltons and the TMZs, Wendy had been calling out celebrities since the late 80s. From celebrity feuds to lawsuits to gossip and slander, Wendy talked about it all. Her voice, commentary, and opinion on celebrity news made an impact and had a huge influence in the court of public opinion and culture. In this episode, we will explore various celebrity scandals that Wendy covered and some of her celebrity beefs. This episode will specifically cover her syndicated radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, which ran from 2001 to 2009. Welcome to the hit list of Wendy. In 2001, after being on the Philly radio waves for a few years, Wendy contacted her previous boss at KISS, and told him that she wanted to reclaim her spot back in New York as the queen of radio. Though Wendy had been run out of New York for running her mouth back in 1998, no one could replace her, though many tried. Upon contacting Vinny, Wendy signed a contract and returned to New York radio with her syndicated show, The Wendy Williams Experience. Upon her return, Wendy didn't miss a beat. She went right back to dishing the dirt, exposing public figures, and spilling all the tea. Hello? Wendy, Wendy. Uh, yes? Listen. Uh-oh. Uh, yes, it is a uh-oh. I need to know what is Sue's real name because I work at a hospital. What is whose real name? Free. Free? Yes, Free. Free. Because remember how you said Free might be pregnant for Jay-Z? Yeah, but what I'm understanding is that Jay-Z's boy, Ty Ty or Tay Tay, just had a baby. Oh, because I work at a hospital and Jay-Z was here for hours. Well, let me s- hours. Okay, what do, you, what do you call hours? I mean for a whole my eight-hour shift. And it was... And Get ready with that button because I'm going to ask her a name. Uh, all right, what was the girl's name on the, um, on the clipboard? Wendy's claim to fame came when she launched her syndicated radio show. There, Wendy would interview celebrities, where she would often put them on the spot. Some would say that Wendy exploited and embarrassed them. Others would say that she held them accountable. Wendy would say that she did it all. The first celebrity scandal that Wendy talked about in her book is the trial and case of O.J. Simpson. For context, In 1994, O.J. was charged in the double homicide of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and friend, Ronald Goldman. Quote, The O.J. Simpson trial is something people still talk about, and it's been more than 10 years since that verdict. 
In 2003, I met O.J. Simpson, who, by the way, was acquitted of the double homicides in the criminal trial, but found responsible for the deaths of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, in a civil trial. My station, WBLS, which happens to be a Black-owned radio station, set it up. They basically sprang the interview on me without asking if I even wanted to interview him, which I didn't. Sometimes people feel that because we're all black, we all have to support one another. We all have to vote for the black man because he's running for president. We all have to believe the black man is innocent of murder because America shows black men so much injustice. Well, I'll tell you what. When they told me OJ was at the station to be interviewed, I was upset. I was very upset. They never asked me if I wanted to sit face to face with someone who I believe is a murderer. Someone who I believe got away with murder. OJ, I was told not to ask you about the incident. Is there any reason why? What incident? The incident with Nicole. The, the, because um, there's nothing to talk about. Okay. Because you were proven innocent in some Because I was innocent. Yeah. I was proven innocent. And once, you, once we open that, we back into the... Yeah. It's, yeah. what, seven years now? It's the it's over and over and yeah. over. You know I mean? They say life goes on. So um, when when you travel and when you're walking down the street and things like that, what type of reaction do you get from people? The exact reaction, maybe a little more emotional okay. than, that I got 15 years ago. If you took a walk with me down the street, you'd be amazed. I don't care where I go, white, black, wherever I go, everybody's terrific. No, I don't okay. know. You're uh, good with the white women. No, I see all black women. I'm good with the sisters too, baby. When Wendy interviewed O.J., she intended on holding his feet to the fire and asking the questions that everybody wanted to hear. In her mind, he was guilty, and she intended to let him know. But as the interview proceeded, Wendy's plans went out the window. Instead of confronting O.J., Wendy found herself quite charmed by the ex-football star. And this would upset her audience. I think that there are people offended now that you're here. You know, I would think that the ones who are offended may be tuned in to another channel. I don't know. It's just a guess on my part. Yeah. I would like to think that the majority of your listeners would not be. I know you'd like to think that, Oj, but I'm not sure. The truly righteous are not the self-righteous. Just remember that. I read that in the correct. OJ, I want to say I don't like you. I can't stand you. I want to call you names. I want to throw you right out of here. But you know what? Your husband's watching. You better watch this. You've done it to me. Can I invite you to a party? Yeah, sure. I'll be there. OJ, damn you. I like you. Thank you. Damn you. Damn you. No! Oh my gosh, he hugged me! <laughs> Damn you, OJ. Damn you, OJ Simpson, you're charming. Thank you. Upon Wendy's interview with the controversial athlete, her listeners called in expressing deep anger. They felt that Wendy took it easy on him, and in her book, she expresses that she did. Quote, I found OJ to be perfectly charming in person. He was actually very attractive to me. Yes, he charmed me. First of all, he's sexy. He has a full head of hair, and he has the smoothest, most beautiful skin. And his body. He has a nice physique. He's big and charming with beautiful teeth and a nice smile. OJ was very candid in his responses, and he obviously wasn't trying to be politically correct. We got along very well. We drank champagne, and he left. And when he did leave, I thought, Ugh, he's handsome. He's charming. But he's a murderer. But um, and, and what you said about being all covered up, because you, I know we don't use the word hater, uh -huh. but you were one of the ones that used to criticize me for, like, always being covered up. And I was like, you know, I wish Wendy understood this ain't my choice. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, when your first album came out, though, you was really covered up. Really covered Visual up. Love, and that was before your breast implants oh, and everything please, like that. Wendy, honey, don't even... Don't even uh, make really me start cursing uh -oh. because <laughs> you're those... saying stuff that ain't true. Because also I wasn't. I was also forced to wear certain garments oh, back in those days. Is that it? Oh. Let's just say that. Hey, Mariah. Okay, we gotta go. Mariah, go. Mariah I ain't studio. coming to see you now that you threw no, that. No, I was gonna say, Mariah. That comment's not gonna stop you from coming, the is it? The audience is gonna believe that shit. No, leap that one, Wendy. Uh, All right, I. On the radio, Wendy was very outspoken and didn't bite her tongue. 
During her show, she played very little music, but instead weighed in on the happenings of celebrities. Similar to her segment, Hot Topics, Wendy invited her listeners in to hear what she had to say on celebrity scandals and gossip. Another scandal she covered was the Michael Jackson trial. For context, at the time of Wendy's book, Michael had been accused of child S.A. back in 1993 and 2003. His 1993 case was settled in 94 upon reaching a financial settlement agreement with the accuser. A decade later, Michael would make his way to court again, when more accusations of child S.A. surfaced. Quote, Michael Jackson, in my opinion, is guilty of something. I don't know exactly what, but he did something, even if it was only displaying very, very bad judgment. And it's just as much the fault of his father, Joe Jackson, for taking away his childhood as it is Michael's fault for being a grown man who can't seem to tear himself away from young boys. And while it is easy to point a finger at Joe Jackson and the abuse he allegedly gave to Michael and whatever psychological problems he may have caused, I believe that at 45 years old, you are supposed to have gotten past whatever burdens your parents may have put on your shoulders. I don't know what happened in Michael's childhood, but I do know one thing about abuse. If it isn't dealt with or corrected, the cycle is never broken. I have no idea how this particular case is going to turn out, but I pray that if Michael once again walks, he walks himself somewhere to get some help because he has serious problems. Oh my gosh. Well, the sex charges against Michael are growing. It says in the, in the Daily News today, James DeBarge has claimed that Michael was up to some inappropriate monkey business with his chimp bubbles. What? That's what I'm saying. Exactly, you all. Exactly. Look at art on the keys. See? Now, are you ready? Because, you see, a chimp can't talk, but a chimp got a piss. Oh, so rude. Oh, no. Now, no, female no, chimp. no. Bubbles was a boy, you can best to believe. Oh. Michael would want it that way. <laughs> Now, you know, James DeBarge was married to Janet, but the marriage was annulled back in 1985. And he alleges that back when he was living with the Jackson family, he came upon an eye-popping sight. What do you want me to say next? What do you want me to say next? I don't know. I'm too scared. He walked into Michael's room and found Michael servicing the chimp. No. (laughs) No, that's not what he says next. Here's what he says. He was changing Bubbles' diaper <laughs> yeah, and just got carried away. I swear to you, I could not make this up. This is absolutely... Carried away. E- carried away. DeBar said in the 1993 interview, which has been obtained. This is back from the first station case. DeBar added that during the alleged diaper changing incident, Bubbles, who was just a baby, had a smile on his face. Oh my God. James is jealous because Mike, we talked to him. Right, or mess with his PP. Yes. It must be noted that in regards to Michael Jackson's 2003 SA trial, he was acquitted on all counts in 2005. Maya looks like she scored Christina Milian. See, you're both two cute girls. You remind me of the same person. Two cute girls who just can't catch a break unless you're on your knees. And not you so much, Christina Milian, with that as much as Maya. Maya, who's like a doorknob in the industry. The word is everybody's gotten that turn. And she still can't catch a break. It's got to suck when you're real pretty. And then, you know, you do your thing in closed door meetings and still can't get ahead in the Beyonce world. She must be whack. I, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I think they're both hella cute. I'm not talking about you now, Christina Milian. I'm talking about Maya. But you remind me of the same person. You know, you guys are the quintessential looks don't mean everything. <laughs> In Wendy's book, she writes that her radio show is a reflection of where we have come from as a society and a reflection in many ways of where we are going. She expresses these thoughts by writing, Some will say that perhaps I reflect the worst of what we human beings have to offer. I say, I reflect exactly what is out there in its natural state. If you don't like it, look in the mirror. Wendy never shied away from weighing in on celebrity news, no matter how controversial her comments may be. In her book, she discussed the late basketball star Kobe Bryant's 2003 scandal. For context, in 2003, 
Kobe Bryant was the center of a SA investigation after a woman accused him of raping her inside his hotel room in Eagle County, Colorado. Here's what Wendy had to say. Quote, In 2003, squeaky clean NBA star Kobe Bryant shocked the sports world with his arrest for Kobe Bryant, the fresh-faced, near-perfect endorser's dream, arrested for Surprised? Not me. When I first heard about the Kobe Bryant scandal, I said immediately that he's probably guilty. Guilty of taking it. Rape is such a harsh word. I think it's unfair to use the word rape about a woman who willingly went to a hotel room and who pretty much knew the score and through her own admission got tripped up into something she didn't want to do. I know, because this happened to me. When I think of rape, I think of the woman in the alley whose clothes are ripped, whose face has been scarred, who's been brutalized. I don't like to use the word rape for what happened to the girl in the Kobe Bryant situation. I'll call it non-consensual sex. According to published reports, she agreed to some form of sex with him, but didn't consent when he wanted to do something else with her. I believe she said no, and I also believe that when she said no, he took it. He should not have taken it, but she should not have put herself in that situation. Men like Kobe Bryant are very susceptible to having things like this happen to them. Men who are wealthy, famous, star athletes, actors, wealthy businessmen can all get got like this. I'm innocent. I didn't force her to do anything against her will. I'm innocent. No. I sit here in front of you guys. Furious at myself. So I sit at myself for making a mistake of adultery. Yeah, I love my wife with all my heart. She's backbone. You're a blessing. Wendy's comments on the Kobe Bryant case were controversial back then and even more controversial in later years when they resurfaced during the height of the Me Too movement. It must be noted that in terms of the Kobe Bryant case, charges against him were later dropped and dismissed on September 1st, 2004, when the accuser decided not to testify. Kobe would later settle out of court with her for an undisclosed financial amount. MediaTakeout.com is reporting that Trina claims in a rap song that she slept with Kobe Bryant while he's in, while he's married to Vanessa. And first of all, that would make me as Kenyon Martin throw Trina right back in the gutter where she came from. Trina, I like you, but use a hoe. And no good's going to come to you and no decent man wants that. She's pretty and she's um she's sweet as pie. She's been to this radio show several times, but you know me, I got to call a spade a spade. She's sweet as all get out. But this behavior right here is not becoming of a 30-something-year-old washed-up rapper from the MIA. Please, honey, it is not cute anymore. It really isn't. And there's more to life than having a pumped-up big butt and a smile. Really? Especially when you get in your... Well, not to Trina. You know, Trina was dragged up, not raised up. And so, you know, girls oftentimes when they're dragged up, they don't have a sense of common decency until it's too late. Vanessa, you win. You got Trina so angry she talked herself out of the ring and the NBA. Score one for Vanessa. And I don't even like her, but score one for Vanessa. Now, Vanessa, concentrate all your anger on your man because all that old mess that he's done to you is coming back up again.
Wendy admits that she isn't always on the right side of the fence. According to her, she can be a bit controversial, politically incorrect, and reckless. But sometimes, Wendy can get it right. In her book, Wendy then discusses a scandal that meant a lot to her, as she was one of the first people to publicly expose this celebrity and what he was doing to underage girls. And that celebrity is R. Kelly. For context, at the time of Wendy's book, R. Kelly had been charged with 21 counts of making child SA videos. Quote, In the middle of the week, I received an afternoon call. I had been back in New York perhaps a month at WBLS, and the experience was reestablishing itself as the place to go if you wanted to know what was happening in the world, as far as celebrities are concerned. We were bringing the heat from the start. The caller said that he had something that I had to see. He would meet me downstairs after the show. I got downstairs to see a black limousine, and the person inside was a record label executive, a high appointed record label executive. In the limo was another man from Chicago. The record executive popped in a VHS tape. What I saw to this day makes my stomach turn. I watched in utter disgust. Everything had to register because I knew I was going to get on the air the next day and tell exactly what I saw. And what I saw was a man who looked just like R. Kelly performing sex acts with females who looked just like little girls. The record executive brought the tape to me because he knew that I could put light on this tape the way no one else could. And I did. I broke the R. Kelly story on air the next day. R. Kelly has hired his private investigator to dig up dirt on Jay-Z. So I told you this on Friday and I can't wait. R. Kelly, just have your people find out also, does Jay-Z have a son or a daughter? I can't wait for the fallout because there's nothing like a man who's been sprayed in the face with mace and shown a gun from the audience <laughs> to want to find every and anything on your arch nemesis. <laughs> I don't even want to know what to call it. I'm just, I'm angry at R. Kelly that like you have some nerve. Per mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Think we've, we haven't forgotten. After your investigator finishes doing the work, I wish that they would finish up the business that needs to be attended to regarding your case and the videos and the young girls. Because we haven't forgotten, Robert. When Wendy broke the story on her radio show, the public were weary to believe something so horrendous about such a beloved artist. But despite the backlash, Wendy wouldn't back down. She continued to run the story and talk about something that others in the industry refused to speak about. Quote, older men preying on the young boys and girls is a huge problem that no one talks about. R. Kelly's fans would still buy his records, radio stations would still play his music, and he would still get awards. He was even nominated for a NAACP Image Award. An Image Award? Who says that crime doesn't pay? I get a lot of criticism for telling people's business. I get a lot of flack for gossiping about celebrities on my show. Well, I'll say this. If I don't tell it, who will? Perhaps people will still buy their records, but maybe talking about them gives people a chance to examine a little more closely these people they have put on a pedestal. It was emotional for me to tell this story on the air, but I do what I do because I am tired of seeing these people, these celebrities who have the attention and the ear and eye of so many young people in our society get away with the things they get away with but no matter what scandal celebrities find themselves in, ultimately, after we finish raking them over the coils, talking about them, we still love them. They are our celebrities. Cosby's accuser, Andrea Constance attorney, uh, Bebe Kivitz and Dolores, uh, she's, I can't pronounce the name, she's got two attorneys, disclosed that they have had at least 10 new witnesses to support their client's claim. One of the witnesses is the California attorney, Tamara Green, who has already gone public with her story claiming that Bill Cosby and assaulted her more than 30 years ago. Constance's attorney wants to keep the identity of the other nine women secret. Cosby's attorneys have said in a memorandum and a motion filed in federal court Friday uh, that uh, both of the defending attorneys have violated the federal rules of civil procedure 
da 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 whatever. The point is, is that, you know what? My opinion is so tainted. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not right, but it is. Zoe, is your opinion tainted of Dr. Cosby? Slightly. Yeah. Arthur? No. But you know, women can be scandalous. Okay. Just checking. Let's move on. There are moments throughout Wendy's career where she used her platform for good, to help shine a light and bring things to the forefront, bring things to the public. But on the flip side, there were moments where people would say that she tore others down, dragged them, mocked them, and exerted unwarranted venom. In her book, Wendy has a chapter titled The Dirty Backpack Click, where she shares her thoughts on certain artists, such as India Ari, Lauren Hill, and Erica Badu. These women represent a genre of hip-hop called neo-soul. To Wendy, they represent something else. Quote, There is a movement in hip-hop, one where the artists are into a natural, holistic, clean way of life. Many of them are vegetarian or vegans. They believe in a higher being and are into spirituality. They are hip-hop's version of flower children. I call them the dirty backpack clique. I imagine them with their dirty backpacks filled with candles and incense, spiritual books, some nature bars, and a few different kinds of herbs and oils. Most don't wear deodorant, and they don't drink hard liquor or take hard drugs. Marijuana is an herb from nature, from God, so it is acceptable. They are all about love, not war. But many of these dirty backpackers are hypocrites. They walk around talking about peace and love and the sisterhood and being all natural and on a higher moral plane than everyone else. And they are the biggest offenders. Erica Badu is a dirty backpacker who is out there, way out there. I have interviewed her a number of times. The last was in 2003. And each time she is nuttier and nuttier. Badu comes off like she's very concerned about family values. But isn't the very basis of family values holding down the man who planted the seed in you to have the baby? Am I wrong? Badu had the baby with Andre 3000 from Outcast. They never got married. They never even lived together as a family. What kind of family values is she representing? And she's pregnant again. I don't know who the father is, but she's not married, is she? So, Erica Badu in the studio, everybody. Um, turn the Peace music. and love, everybody. You know what? Turn, love, turn the, music. Scandals. Turn the music love. off. I, I just want to have this conversation because I am absolutely, positively floored right now. So, Shout out to the RBG, real black girls out there. Peace and love. Okay, because Badu. Incense, candles. Okay. Now, you said you have three boyfriends. <laughs> yeah. One of them is common. Yes. And the other two are both dead presidents? Yes, ma'am. That's how it works out. I mean, it's a, it's a new philosophy. We're trying to bring it to the United States. It's actually an African tradition from the Bambula tribe. Okay, Badu, yeah. talk about this. Now, what, what, now, would, once you're married, can you only have one husband? Well, there's no such thing as marriage with the Bambula tribe. It's um, just a way of life. It's just the way it is. It's the way we do it. It's the way we get down. Very nice. Yes. When is the we last have. time, Andre, and you uh, had, uh, you know, sex? Um, I don't know. I don't remember the last time. I don't keep a, I have a, uh, assistant that keeps a register of that. I would have to look through the records and. An assistant that yes. keeps the register of when you have sex? Yes. Is this assistant? With Andre. Ma oh, with Andre. with Andre. Okay. Now, why is that only with Andre? Because he's a special specimen. You know, he's, he is the one who houses the sperm. He's the only one that can impregnate me. <laughs> he was chosen by my, um, God heads. In her book, Wendy writes that she does the show for the people. For John and Jane Q, she explains that she is on the side of the people, which gives her the right to be cutthroat, to ask the uncomfortable questions, and to provoke. It's for the people. Quote, Once I chose to be on the side of the people instead of on the side of the celebrity, I no longer had any boundaries because I was no longer worried about offending anybody. Erica Badu becomes an easy target because she was the first mainstream artist to introduce the Dirty Backpack click, and she has made the biggest ass of herself without my help. Badu couldn't hold down Dre, and she couldn't hold it down with Common, and I'm not seeing her hold it down with this next baby's father. 
Commitment takes a certain level of maturity that Badu has not exhibited, as far as I'm concerned. When it comes to Badu or Lauren, I don't know which one is more of a letdown. They are both, in my opinion, nuts. I know that is such a cruel word, but it is apparently befitting both of them. I don't see the potential for Badu. Her act is wearing thin, quickly. I'm not saying that I'm a role model, but at least I'm keeping it real. When the DPs and Common and you, when the four of you were all together, is there intense competition with the men as to which one is going to, you know... Never, never. I mean, they, it's not that kind of mentality. It's an, it's, a, it's an African mentality, not an American mentality. Okay. I think this is getting boring to the audience. Yeah. I'm getting bored, Wendy. But me too. Let's talk about something else. I'm bored. If I can, I know this is your show, and I don't want to, you know, overtalk you or nothing like that. Yeah, but no, go ahead. Life is so crazy. This is reality, and you have to be a very, very, very cold kind of person to, to do this every day, because this is our lives. Right. And these are people's lives. And I know it don't mean anything to you because tomorrow you're going to say some more stuff about me. Oh, yeah. Which is, which is fine with me. And now, is your mom back home? I know that you, you your mother was, um, I saw you in Philly one time. You, you came to Philly for a radio station I was working for. Mm -hmm. And your mother was with you, mm -hmm. with your son. Mm -hmm. Is your mother still helping you out with your son? Yeah. Your mom helped with, you, with your son? According to Wendy Williams, she always kept it real. No matter how provocative... No matter how obscene, no matter how rude, she's just telling it like it is. In her interviews, Wendy made it a point to make her guests uncomfortable and, in her words, break them down to a point where they spill the beans. Some celebrities handled it fairly well. They kept their cool and got on with the interview. Others, not so much. Some celebrities push back. In this next chapter, Wendy details some of her most explosive interviews— she starts with Judge Mathis. Quote, This interview turned into a disgusting free-for-all where I was cussed out and yelled at. This judge completely lost his cool. I cannot give you any details about the question that set him off. Unfortunately, after the interview, Judge Mathis went back to Detroit and slapped a gag order on me, preventing me from ever talking about that interview or rebroadcasting it. But I can say this, it was one of my more memorable interviews that took a turn for the unexpected. Here on the show, whether it's TV or radio, one thing that Wendy Williams does is keep it real with her audience. Now, my audience knows all about me and what I've been through. And what mm -hmm. they don't know, I go into explicit details mm -hmm. in my book. Mm -hmm. Now, that might not be true, according to you, oh, about yes. this woman that you, that allegedly you, you slept with. Well, you allegedly well, got her know. pregnant. Uh, listen to, the, just her pregnant. let me draw up the skeleton, Judge, and then you fill in the meat. Wendy, I didn't read that part. Now let, you make it now. Okay, up. let me now draw up. WBLS about to be sued for defamation. You gonna make some stuff? Okay, up Judge, you it are wasn't even alleged. Okay, now that's court. called defamation. All right. All right, that's called defamation, Wendy. Okay, you did not allege that. All right, look, I'll tell you what she alleged. It wasn't that. All right, you tell me what she alleged, she alleged Judge, that, in all of your anger. She, I'm not angry. Yes, you are. are. Yes, she you a, are. I'm not angry. Okay. She said that she had had an encounter with me where I was getting high doing cocaine. Listen, I've never used cocaine in my life. Okay, well, never okay, in my tell life. Me what else she alleged, so, Judge? She also alleged uh, uh, um, that that I asked her to sleep with my wife. Yes, she yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You understand me clearly. This is called you when you shit. think that you can just treat people unfairly and say what you want. I am not and saying what I want to you. I, I I simply ask no, no, you no, about no. this woman and you immediately no, no, no. jump you tried to spit to the, no, 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 no. the highest I tell you what of I protestivity I tell you what about I did. something no, no, no. WBLS New York. I immediately told you that it was untrue and I told you that it was tabloid trash which all public <laughs> figures <laughs> have to <laughs> Do it. Right. I, and then you continue to want to talk about it for 10 more minutes. And I informed you that you were fueling rumors by continuing to talk about it. No, because I wanted to ask my reputation. No, no, and I'm no. not going to let you do that. I just when you try to do that, you're going to get checked every time you do it. Are you clear on that? Or do I have to continue checking you over and over? Because I will. As long as I 
I'm here, and as long as you get out of order, I will check you. So, yeah. So, you don't know this woman. There you go again. Are you still getting high? Several celebrities have gone on record to say that you don't want to be on Wendy's hit list. You don't want to be a topic of conversation on her show. Because once she starts talking about you, she doesn't stop. But Jay-Z, <laughs> do tell. Is it really only about you and B? Or do you have a baby's mother and, you know, of a child? Wow. Well, listen, the um, also the PI is going to go after um, his business associates who include the Universal Music Chief, Doug Morris, who actually hired Jay-Z to run Def Jam. Mr. Morris, I hope you're living on the up and up. Because when a PI gets in your business, everything falls out. I hope everybody's heterosexual. Because you could say a lot about R. Kelly, but I never heard anything homosexual. So therefore, he wouldn't be interested in keeping the secret. Because he's not part of the Velvet Mafia. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hal hath no fury like a heterosexual man in the music business. <laughs> You can say a lot about the Kells, but you can't say that. It's never come across my desk that way. And don't start to try to fax and try to put something in my mouth now because I'm not believing it. Kells is a lot of things, including <laughs> guilty to me. <laughs> but he's definitely not uh, gay. Ow. I hope all you all can pass that test with flying colors. The next memorable interview that Wendy discusses in her book was with the late singer Whitney Houston. Quote, My interview with Whitney took place on December 15, 2002, two weeks after her big sit-down with Diane Sawyer on ABC Primetime. During Whitney's interview with Diane, it was clear to me that she was in a bad way, and you fill in the blanks. Whitney's behavior was frightening, and her body language was very telling. She was a classic case of deception, she was sweating and frequently touching her face, which, body language experts will tell you, indicates deception. The appearance of Bobby Brown was absolutely telling, and when she brought out Bobby Christina, I had one hand on the telephone to call child services. I have been talking about Whitney Houston on my radio show since she married Bobby Brown. She's provided enough material to keep me in business for years, from declaring Bobby Brown to be the original king of R&B, to her missing appearances and sweating like a pig on award shows, to her relationship with Robin, to her breast implants, to her pregnancy and 80-pound weight gain, to her near-skeletal appearance on the Michael Jackson special. The decline of Whitney Houston, perhaps the greatest diva of our times, is the biggest scandal of this generation. It is bigger than that Michael Jackson mess, Bigger than Kobe Bryant, bigger than Diana Ross, bigger than Ben and Jen, bigger than Robert Blake and OJ, bigger than Janet Jackson's boob. In my opinion, the downfall of Whitney Houston is so huge because we have witnessed her literally implode right before our eyes. We have watched her go from our princess, a role model, a gracious woman, to what looks to be one step above a crackhead. Interviewing Whitney was the crowning jewel of my career. I very much enjoyed that interview. I was shocked by some of the things she said and the way she expressed herself, but I was pleased with the way it went. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Oh my gosh. Oh my Lord, have I waited for this day? Have you? Well, yes. I have. Haven't you? Whitney. Yes, dear. Absolutely. I know it. I don't believe that I've ever met you in my entire career. Isn't that funny? You talk about me all the time. And you are top billing. Is that why you talk about me all the time? Absolutely. You don't even know me. Do you regret Diane Sawyer interview? No. Why should I? Well, it didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you know, Wendy, you don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. Yeah, but I'm on the radio every day. Yeah, we, we, don't, we just don't get to see your face, but they should know what you look like. So, Whitney, as, as far as you stand with drug use, is there drug 
issues going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't yeah. ask me no questions like I'm a child. You talk to your baby about her, what, what she gonna be uh, confronting or what she gotta deal with. And uh, and don't it, ask it, me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. My child is a little boy, and I will talk to him yeah, at drugs. Don't talk about that shit. Don't talk to me about that. Shit. I was a full blown co. Addict, so well, I, I, problem, I, not mine. Move on. Well, you know that was my problem with me. Yourself, did you ask God to help you? And no, I na I managed. Thank God, because I have a good man. And, and, so, and do I. so thank God, I was able to just rise and up above God, it Wendy. and quit. And all I asked this. So recently, I was hearing that you were trying to trim the budget. Which, by the way, Whitney, I thought that this was something. Where the hell are you get your information? Well, who's calling you and telling you? Um, uh, well, I got this story from a gossip named Steve Hurst. You ever hear of him? No. Listen, that we're saying that you were uh, you cut your mother's um, See, you know what the allowance. See, don't make me close on the radio. I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, come on. Well, Steve was saying it was from about like $1,600 a week to about $500 a week. I you to kiss my Okay. <laughs> That's all good. That happened. I don't even know what the you're talking about. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, Wendy. When your husband was um, incarcerated for those few days, what types of things do you tell her concerning, like, do you say, like, daddy's away visiting Boston? What are we talking to her? A retard? She was a scared patient? She's a child who has intelligence. Okay. My child is smart. No, what I, I talk to her, shut your mouth. I talk to her like she's an intelligent human being, okay? And I give her just as much as she can handle for a nine-year-old because I'm her mother, okay? And that's how we deal with it. Never mind what I told her, but she know the deal. You smoke weed? Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Mariah Carey was on the show and said that she loves you more than ever. She denied her breast implants. Do you deny yours? <laughs> no. They fit nice. They're very well proportioned with you. It's just that at one point when you lost so much weight, though, they did look like two baseballs on a stick. Yeah, they look really weird. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you have some reservations about your looks, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Wendy's interview with Whitney would blow up and ultimately be named as one of VH1's top 100 moments in entertainment. Wendy's opinions and commentary on celebrity news has earned her various enemies. Though she admits that her commentary can be rough and harsh, she remains unapologetic. Some celebrities have been able to forgive Wendy for what she said about them, while others avoid her like the plague. In her book, the next memorable interview Wendy details is with model Tyson Beckford. The two would initially meet when she was on the radio in Philly, but they would go on to have a years-long feud after Wendy insinuated that he was gay. So what? He's into model and he's into fashion. What are stereotyping? Or if he affiliates with high fashion people that everyone knows are gay, does that make your father gay? But I'm torn. Oh, okay. So she has a window open for the possibility because I don't want, I don't want him to wake up thinking that there's something wrong with that homosexuality, but his dad is not gay. I can vouch for that. Oh, really? You're all the way over there on the left coast. Let me tell you about a few things that go on here in the New York tri-state area. Do we have time? Nope. Oh, well, conveniently, we don't. So I will leave you all with this. How you doing, Tyson? Oh, wow. If you watch part one to this series, then you know that Wendy outing and discussing closeted gay men in the industry was a hot topic on her show. And it was something she continued to discuss, no matter how wrong. Quote, another great radio moment was with model Tyson Beckford. It was in 1999, while I was still in Philly. My general manager called my program director, who called me in the studio with a very stern voice and a very firm delivery, talking about, you better not blow this for us. He told me that I couldn't ask him questions centered on his relationships, his sexuality, his sexuality, and his sexuality. So when he walked into the studio, he plopped down into the swivel chair and he swiveled around with his back to me facing my two co-hosts. He conducts the interview facing the wall with sunglasses on. The whole interview became about Tyson and his anger toward me. I ended up asking him about who he was dating and about his sexuality. 
I didn't ask in a way that would get me in trouble, though. I said, Tyson, I already got the memo, and I can't ask you about your sexuality, and I can't ask you about your relationships. Why is that, Tyson? He was very curt, very cold. He gave me one-word answers and grunts. I still laugh about that interview. The next time I got to talk to him was on the red carpet at the VH1 Fashion Awards in 2003. I call out to Tyson as he walks by. He sees it's me, and instead of walking on the way many celebrities who see me do, he stops and creates the following scene. For context, since our last interview in Philly, I had made it back to New York on the radio, and every so often Tyson Beckford would be a topic of conversation. The rumors were heating up with Tyson and Derek Jeter, and one major rumor had it that Tyson had a tattoo somewhere on his body of a Yankee symbol with Jeter's number on it and the initials DJ under that. The rumor apparently got back to Tyson, who, upon seeing me on the red carpet, started to take off his clothes right there. It leads everybody to speculate whether you and Derek Jeter are closer than we thought. Tyson, shut it down, shut him down. See that? What is under there? Okay, there's nothing under it. Patrick, they said it's on your arm. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This arm? Stop it. It's not there. It's not there. You can't put something that's not there. Knock it off. Did you get it removed or covered up? I saw, I don't see anything. I one. So how would I even get it removed or covered up? Wendy's feud with Tyson Beckford would be one of many. She has had a plethora of celebrity beefs over the course of her career. From Puffy, who ran her out of New York, to Howard Stern, who she looked up to, to Beyonce, and the list goes on. One of her most infamous feuds is with the rapper Method Man, as their issues span decades. Wendy would make some comments about Method Man's wife back in 2006 that didn't sit well with him, even to this day. But before we discuss what she said, here's a quote from Wendy's book where she talks about the gossip frenzy. Quote, Don't get me wrong. As much as I love the scandals, there is a part of me, the very human part of me, that is saddened by our lust for it. We have become desensitized to everything, and we seem not to care about people and their feelings or the impact this stuff will have on our kids. We want to know, and we want to know more. There was a time when I was just a regular DJ, spinning the hits, but before I knew it, I had gone from spinning hits to telling people's business, and you people wanted to know more and more. I comfort myself by saying that Gossip doesn't ruin people anymore. So many of us have dark past and secrets that we cannot afford to point our finger at the next person and judge. Thank God we live in a forgiving society. And Black people are among the most forgiving. So in terms of ruining someone, there are so many ways to make a wrong a right. We don't have time to hold people's feet to the fire for but so long. Before we know it, there is the next scandal to focus on. In 2006, during Wendy's radio show, she would tell her listeners that Method Man's wife was sick with cancer. She said, quote, Method Man, his wife is sick, and she's not doing too well. This is the big C, big C. Wendy also insinuated that Method Man was having an affair with a doctor who was treating his wife. Method Man said in an interview, quote, She said me and the doctor was effing. What kind of S is that, man? You don't do that to nobody. You say what the F you want to say about me. Say nothing about my family. I think your wife was going through a situation just recently, man. How did that resolve itself? Everything all right now? I'd like to know how you found out. MTV. MTV, what did they say? They said that uh, you were going through something with, uh, with your wife. Like, I think she was sick or something like that, right? Yeah, she was sick. Is she all right now? I'd like to thank Wendy Williams for bringing that to the masses because she didn't have to go on the radio and say that shit. I like to keep stuff like that private, but yeah, she was sick. But everything's all right now. All right. Better than what it was. Well, then that's what's well, up, right. Definitely that's better what's than up. what it was. That's what's up, man. I know a lot of us go through it, you know what I mean? I'll be feeling like, yo, that ain't nobody fucking business right there, though. That's, I'm sorry. That's just how I feel about it. And she, that's her business. She didn't want anybody to know about it. You know what I'm saying? And I respected her wishes right there. So for the media to bring that and put that out there like that, I think that's 
mad tacky and disrespectful. Yeah, well, you know what? We won't even run that, man. So don't even worry. No, y'all can run that. I want that to be. I want that to be ran. I'm talking about as far as the way it was done in the beginning, because she's she's past all that now. But when okay. it was going on and all that, and people, it was done by. I'm gonna give you. A, Wendy Williams did it. All right, her. She's the one that did it. You can attack me any way you want to. I'm in the entertainment business, but you don't attack my family, man. My wife ain't nothing to do with that, man. At all, nothing to do with that. You did not have to do that. Her family members didn't even know she was sick. We still live in our same community where we used to live at. The people that lived around us didn't know she was sick, too. You said that. Everybody looking at her, staring at her. You know how uncomfortable that makes somebody feel, especially somebody that's going through chemo? Stupid ass. Bad enough she didn't have her hair on her head. You think she wants people staring at her, pointing at her, talking about how sick she is? Nobody knew anything until Wendy Williams said that shit. She doesn't want a lot of fans, man. She doesn't have any fans, and the nah, people that listen to her are just as fucking dumb because the bitch is an idiot, man. She's a fucking idiot, man. It's like she can say whatever she want to say about me. I never call up there for shit. She can say whatever she want to say. But you don't attack my family, man. You got to be out your fucking mind, lady. For real, you got to be out your motherfucking mind, man. I ain't no regular okie doke, man. I ain't no insane Justin Timberlake ass, man. Come from Park Hill, Staten Island, Park Hill. You've been on my block. You know where. You know where I'm from. You've been on my block. You fucking little around there. Think I don't know? Snip and blow, sucking these niggas off and shit. I know. Have you want to do it, Wendy? But me, I'm not gonna do it verbally. I'm not gonna come on your little show and try and bark on you and shit like that. Nah, man. I'm street. You see me. Wendy and met the man's conflict when and in there. Their issues would resurface after Wendy released her movie and documentary in 2021, where she alleged that she and Method Man had an affair. But we'll talk about that in part three. Oh yeah, it's the Wendy Williams Experience, everyone. And it's Advice Hour. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Great. I need some advice, please. Okay. Okay, well, first of all, I'm a pre-op transsexual, okay. and I'm currently involved and in being taken care of by um, someone who's in the entertainment industry. Do we know who this person is as a side? We sure do. He's an R&B singer. Okay. Recently divorced. I can't say who he is, you know, obviously, but, you know. Is he this very is tall? He's tall. Is he over six feet? Yes, he's definitely over six feet. Wow. And you realize that he also beat his wife up. <laughs> do, you, do you know that? Mm. He's beating you up. He, no, he has not. He's never hit me. He treats me totally different from what, you know. But you know he beat his wife up. I've heard that he beat his wife up, yeah. yes. Um, and I've known for years that he's homosexual. Okay. Wendy's radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, talked about a variety of celebrities, celebrities from all facets. No one was off limits. In her book, she discusses American lawyer and media personality Star Jones. She wrote, The View Star Jones got engaged on national television during halftime at the 2004 All-Star Game in Los Angeles. She's been a basketball fan for a long time. She has recently lost a great deal of weight, though, through what I understand was stomach stapling. I applaud her effort to lose weight, and she's starting to look really great. Star was definitely morbidly obese and clearly an attractive woman with great potential to be a world-class beauty. She had been seeing Al Reynolds for four or five months. When I heard Star and Al got engaged, I was not surprised at all. She talks cocky, she and her all-girl crew, but you hear the wanting in her voice. I wish Star Jones happiness because she appears to have it all. And if Star has found her man, I'd pump my fist for her. Al Reynolds is getting a complete package of a complete woman. He's meeting her as a fat so, but will end up with a woman with nice proportions, who has loads of money and an education and whose 40 plus years of sassiness and courage, as well as genuine fears and vulnerability, make her a real woman. I wish them luck. I give it three years. Anyway, all right, Star Reynolds, we'll get used to calling you that, okay? I do believe in respecting um, a woman's, a woman's, uh, you know, marriage. Star Reynolds. Star Jones Reynolds. 
<laughs> it says here, Al Reynolds stepped out last week without his new bride, Star. Why do they keep calling her Star Jones? It's Star Reynolds. The Wall Streeter arrived at the new downtown hotspot, Air, dressed in a tux and in the company of three male friends. They will not let this man live, will they? Yeah. And so then neither will we. Uh -huh. Al, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Spies say he had some trouble getting in by the doorman until someone finally recognized him. See, they're just not going to let Al live, are they? Star Jones and Al Reynolds married on November 13th, 2004. Their divorce was finalized on September 10th, 2008. They were married for almost four years. Over the years, Wendy's mouth brought her a lot of enemies and even landed her in several rappers' diss tracks. So often, her commentary and opinions got her into hot water. But there would be one person in her life who would come to the rescue. Kevin. According to those in the industry, Kevin protected that mouth. When certain celebrities showed up at the studio ready to fight her, Kevin was there to intercede. Insiders say that Kevin was a street man who had power. They say that whenever Wendy was in trouble, he would make those troubles disappear by any means necessary. In 2008, Kevin's ways would make headlines upon reports coming out that he went as far as to order a hit to eliminate Wendy's radio competition, Miss Jones. Take a look. I have the federal complaint right here in my hand. It all started as a sexual harassment lawsuit. Now it's all about murder for hire. Wendy Williams earned the title Queen of All Media with her top-rated syndicated radio show, aired in New York on WBLS, and her upcoming TV show airing on Fox 5. In a federal sexual harassment lawsuit, her talent booker, Nicole Spence, claims that Wendy and her husband, Kevin Hunter, tried to hire a hitman for a rival. Ms. Spence recently learned that defendant Hunter had asked a male employee who was working at the company at the time to help him find someone to kill rival radio personality Tarsha Jones, also known as Miss Jones on radio station Hot 97, because he was apparently angry over some comments that Miss Jones made about his wife on the air. A spokesperson for my Hot 97 colleague, Miss Jones, says this is a very serious allegation and very unfortunate if it's true. But that's not all. The lawsuit also claims similarly, Miss Spence also learned that defendant Williams herself asked that same individual to help her get someone to kill her husband, defendant Hunter. Wendy's camp vehemently denies the murder for hire plots. Ms. Williams and her husband, Kevin Hunter, say the allegations are absolutely and completely false. The spokesperson adds that Wendy and her husband are looking forward to putting these negative rumors to rest. We were unable to verify with the NYPD if any complaints were ever filed in connection with the alleged murder for hire plot. As for Nicole Spence, her attorney Ken Thompson says he expects her to be fully vindicated in federal court. In Midtown, Lisa Evers, Fox 5 News. Nicole's lawsuit against Kevin would later be dismissed with prejudice upon the parties coming to a settlement agreement. Miss Jones recently did an interview where she discussed the alleged plot to take her life. Take a look. So Wendy Williams tried to murder you. Ooh. Where was you at when you got the news? You sitting around, you getting two ways because I imagine you get the like, news on the murder. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, you got the news right? because at that time like it's not on no. Yeah, so so I'm in Aruba. Okay, let's just be clear. <laughs> Is this after Pocket Big died? Yes. So I'm in Aruba with my new husband, and I see a split screen that reminds me of the tsunami. And it's my face, but now it's Wendy's face. And it says, rival DJ puts Plot's murder hit on competition. Damn. Yeah, this is not, this is not funny. I know we laughed about it a little bit, but I don't think this is funny. So did you get to the bottom <laughs> of it? Or like, no, I didn't. Because so you never spoke to Wendy about it? I'm like, that's white people shit. Like, do we even do that? Right. And so when Envy said, I saw Kevin in the club this weekend, and he said, don't worry about it. It's all good. They're not trying to kill you. I'm like, Wendy's the one that called me to tell me how to get a job in Philly. Right. She made the calls to that's make... That's why it doesn't make sense. It, but it makes all the sense in the world when your husband is controlling and dominating and telling you, Wendy, don't be friends with Jonesy. She wants to be what you want to be. Bishop, he's trying wanna, to protect his little empire. He was trying to protect his, but he was manipulating, in my opinion, he was manipulating her because she was the one that had the power. Over the years, several celebrities have spoken out and condemned Wendy, calling her reckless, 
slanderous, evil, and dangerous. But no matter how damaging, Wendy had the numbers and the ratings. Her formula worked. It worked so much that Wendy would later be inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame in 2009 and land her own talk show. Wendy would take that formula of high drama and gossip and bring it to her show, where a new heir was born. But after years of Wendy making celebrities her hot topics, she would become a hot topic. <laughs> 